Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest as former President Trump gets set to travel to New York City to surrender to authorities. We'll tell you what you can expect. And more severe storms. The same area that was hit so hard on Friday going to add to the violent storms. In the last 10 days, we've seen more than 50 people die. We're going to have that potential again through tomorrow. I'll have the track of the latest storms and the timing right here on GMA. Creed 3 is closing in on $150 million in domestic box office. The boxing pick made $5 million for fifth place. His Only Son, a Bible movie from the studio behind The Chosen, made $5.3 million in its opening weekend. Scream 6 also earned $5.3 million, tying for third place. You come here thinking there is a way out of this world for you, Mr. Wick. John Wick Chapter 4 slipped more than 60% in its sophomore weekend, but still took in $28.2 million for a 10-day total of $123 million. On your knees. Okay, chop it off. Chop it off, let's do it. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves debuted on top, with solid reviews and an opening weekend haul of $38.5 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Coming up on our next hour of GMSA, local teachers are making their voices heard on what would take to keep them in our schools. Why one teacher's union says the solutions are simple if the state would just work with them. And how local organization is turning what was an eyesore into a place to benefit the unsheltered with some next level care. And also coming up next, a big announcement expected today from NASA, the crew for the Artemis II mission that'll put humans back on the moon. And there's Trans Guide. Things are looking good. I think we've only had one stalled car so far, so keep it up. Don't be that driver. We'll be back. In just hours, former President Donald Trump expected to arrive here in New York City to face criminal charges. I'm Morgan Norwood, and coming up, I'll walk you through what's expected today. Back here at home, San Antonio firefighters tackling a blaze on the city's northwest side. A look at the damage from overnight. And a look outside with live cam. There is a nice shot of the city. The clouds are kind of hanging right around near foggage level. Near foggage level. Is that a new weather phrase? We got that. We like that. <laughs> hey, it's Monday. What do you expect? Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is 6 o'clock on Monday, April 3rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I'm hearing there's a lot going on in the weather. Yeah, there's a yeah. little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so some some cloudish, foggish. There's clouds hanging right at the foggish level. That is, that's a new one. But <laughs> you guys come up with new it. phrases, so I figured I'll throw one out there for you. Hey, listen, I appreciate the creativity. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually not far off. It's not bad. I've heard worse. Uh, let's first start with what we got going on here across Texas. It's quiet other than the foggish conditions. Uh, we've got some severe storms though moving across parts of Alabama and uh, moving into the panhandle of Florida. This is the storm system that brought all the hail yesterday to Dallas. So that's moving away, but we will still have uh, a very, very small chance for a storm or two across Texas later this afternoon. Right now, uh, it's 71 and cloudy. Dew point is at 68. Southerly winds at about 6 miles per hour. Your case at 12 hour forecast. Yes, we will leave some patchy fog in there this morning. And then mostly cloudy midday 83. We top out close to 94 this afternoon. That really is the big story. The heat today, heat and humidity. And yes, we can't rule out a stray storm, but it's not likely. Uh, most of us are just going to be uh, partly cloudy today. Uh, rain chances. Well, they do jump up Wednesday. We get a 20% chance with a front and then Thursday, Friday. Those are the big days. 60 and 70% chance of rain could see some healthy rainfall too. Uh, fantastic news. We'll jump into more of that forecast here in just a little bit. Let's get over to Steven. Uh, with a look at your morning commute, I would imagine things are starting to pick up. You know what? As soon as we enter 6 a.m., yeah, we start to see a little bit more activity out there. Just in 35 at Flores, not a bad shot. In fact, those lower levels look pretty quiet. Now, while the trans guide cameras aren't catching a lot of issues out there, what we are starting to see a little bit more of are stalls and a little bit more traffic as well. So our first stall has actually been reported here along 35 southbound as you approach McCullough Avenue. As you see on the map, you're not noticing any red or yellow, so that's a good indication we're not seeing slowdowns but give it some time because the morning is still pretty young 
we'll tend to see more of those slowdowns pick up maybe in the next 30 to 45 minutes. So right now you're still in the clear, but I was just trying to update our map uh, just a little while ago because we have at least two more stalls that are reported. One of them being along I-10 westbound at Crossroads, and you don't really see any buildup out there as well. But I mentioned this earlier, check those vehicles, guys. You want to make sure you arrive to your destination on time and safely. Uh, but thankfully, nothing's really going to slow you down if you're traveling in from any of these communities along I-10 eastbound. That journey from Bernie should take about 24 minutes to the Alamo City, 26 along 281 southbound. No need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bulverde and along 35 southbound, not too awful from New Braunfels. 25 minutes right now. So we're selling the clear there. But again, stalls are starting to pop up. I'm going to have to update our map and let you know what areas to uh, be on the lookout for. But remember, anytime you see those flashing lights, be sure to move over or slow down. David, Alyssa. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters tackled a blaze at a business on the city's northwest side. It happened overnight around 11 o'clock in the 100 block of Babcock. That's near Fredericksburg Road. Firefighters on the scene found flames in the building's attic. Put it out quickly. Right now, investigators are working to find a cause of that fire, and there were no injuries reported. Security on high alert in New York City ahead of the arrival of former President Donald Trump, who's expected to be in court tomorrow. Yeah, as ABC's Morgan Norwood reports, metal barriers surround the Trump Tower in the criminal court building in lower Manhattan with NYPD bracing for possible protests. In just hours, former President Trump expected to arrive in New York one day ahead of his historic arraignment. Donald Trump becoming the first president, current or former, to face criminal charges. He's due to surrender at Manhattan Criminal Court on Tuesday. He's gearing up for a, a battle. Um, you know, this is something that obviously we believe is a political persecution. We're ready for this fight, and, and I look forward to moving this thing along as quickly as possible to exonerate him. Sources tell ABC News Trump is facing around two dozen charges, including felonies. We won't know what they are until the indictment is unsealed, but prosecutors had been investigating how Trump accounted for hush money payments to Stormy Daniels weeks before the 2016 election. Hush money payments themselves, not a crime. Falsifying business records to conceal hush money money payments, typically a misdemeanor, but can be a felony if it's done in furtherance of or to conceal another crime. That other crime could be a federal campaign finance violation, a state election infraction or tax crime. Whatever charges the grand jurors decided on, they might not be the only ones Trump faces, since there are other federal and state criminal investigations into possible election tampering, the January 6th insurrection and his handling of classified documents. Trump is expected to arrive in New York sometime this afternoon and spend the night in his Fifth Avenue apartment before he's driven by motorcade to his arraignment. Once inside, he'll be processed but not handcuffed and walked along the 15th floor corridor into a courtroom where his attorney says he'll plead not guilty. I've done a million arraignments in that courthouse um, with, with celebrities and whatnot, but this is a whole different thing. Now, there will be no other court proceedings on the 15th floor while Trump is inside. Streets around here will also be closed. Now, after the arraignment, Trump will reportedly head back to Mar-a-Lago, where he has announced plans to speak. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. In other headlines this morning, the trial of an Idaho woman accused of killing her two youngest children is scheduled to start today. A jury will determine if Lori Vallow killed her two children, 7-year-old JJ and 17-year-old Ty Lee. A separate trial will be held for her husband, Chad Daybell, also accused in those murders. They're also both charged in the death of Daybell's late wife. The news of Lori's children's death come after grandparents reported them missing back in 2019 and after Vallow privately married a doomsday author in Hawaii and joined his religious group. After nine months of searching, the children were found buried in a shallow grave. Prosecutors have painted a grim story. They say the couple's doomsday beliefs led them to kill. A CDC team in Ohio investigating a toxic train crash are now recovering after they begin to experience the same symptoms as other people in the area. CDC officials say on March 6, seven investigators were part of a team going door to door, evaluating people who had started experiencing sore throats, headache, coughing and nausea. For weeks, state and local officials have tested the air and water, declaring the results have shown both are OK. Despite government reassurances, people in the area are still not satisfied. We certainly do feel forgotten in some aspects. Well, how many people in my community need to be sick in order for someone to say, oh, maybe the air quality isn't so great? 
The news of investigators falling ill comes the same day the Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against Norfolk Southern, handing down a nearly $65,000 fine for every day it violated clean water laws. Norfolk Southern responding to that lawsuit saying in part, quote, we'll keep working until we make it right. The latest round of severe weather in the U.S. dropping hail the size of golf balls in North Texas, where tornado warnings were issued in the Dallas area. Parts of the South have little time to prepare for the next round of storms. With more tornadoes possible tomorrow from Dallas to Chicago, including Little Rock, Arkansas, and the bullseye once again. At least 59 tornadoes tore across 11 states on Friday and Saturday, killing at least 32 people. And even though it's April, there's a blizzard warning in parts of Nebraska, the Dakotas, and Minnesota. Happening today, NASA is expected to announce the crew for the Artemis II mission that will put humans back on the moon. Four astronauts will be named, including the first woman to go to the moon and first person of color. Prep for the mission started after success of Artemis I test mission. That mission sent the Orion capsule around the moon and back. The four astronauts will go around the moon for the first time since the end of the Apollo program 51 years ago. I wonder what's changed on the moon since then. Ah, right, exactly. 609, <laughs> 71 degrees. Still to come on GMSA, Netflix is making some changes to their platform that can mean less movies in the future. And also coming up after the break, women's college hoops at the new national champion, how LSU captured their first ever title yesterday. And taking a live look across the city right now, we're expecting some foggish, you know, activity. <laughs> That's what Justin, you know, and David was discussing. We'll hear more about it when we come back. And this morning, March Madness officially wraps up tonight with the men's national championship in Houston. But on the ladies' side, two teams are making history with LSU winning its first national championship. Andrew Dimbert brings us the sights and sounds from Sunday. LSU has captured its very first national championship. This morning, LSU celebrating a dominant win over Iowa for the NCAA women's title. The three-seeded Tigers were the underdog, facing Iowa megastar Caitlin Clark. Clark separates and knocks down a three. She scored 30 points, setting the record for most points in an NCAA tournament, men's or women's. But it was not enough to overcome LSU's offense in the highest scoring women's final ever. This team is just amazing. We built each other up from the summertime and I'm so happy. Tonight, it's the men's title game. Four-seed UConn faces five-seed San Diego State. The Aztecs celebrating this wild, buzzer-beating win over the weekend. Butler's with two seconds. He's got to put it up. And he wins it. He wins it. That shot from Lamont Butler, a childhood dream realized. In the driveway, I used to have a, a, a court that I used to, to play on, and it was a bunch of like three, two, one. Shy. This is for sure a dream come true. Um, it's no comparison to what actually happened. Even more remarkable, just over a year ago, Butler lost his sister. She was murdered. He says he felt her presence while making that game-winning shot. I think she was with me with that shot. She probably got the ball in a little bit, so uh, I miss her, and I'm just happy I'm able to do this for her. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. They just saw it. San Diego State defeated Florida Atlantic 72-71 thanks to a buzzer beater in the final four. How many times do you think that guy practiced that shot and then he got to hit it? You know what? It could have been thousands of times. And the final four is coming up tonight. <laughs> UConn knocked off Miami 72-59. San Diego State will have their hands full. UConn has won every game of the tournament by double digits. Wow, that, that was amazing. Really good. nice to see, you know, the ladies celebrating the guys as well. It'll be fun tonight. Yeah, that was a good game yesterday mm -hmm. until it got out of control. Uh -oh. <laughs> good win for LSU. 615, 71 degrees, right. and the traffic is still flowing smoothly. <laughs> yes, David, both hands on the wheel, but two thumbs up here because we actually haven't seen major issues that are being reported, but uh, I would say let's uh, start to see, starting to see a few slowdowns there. 16-4 uh, to 4 at John Peace. We'll get that shot back up for you, but check out 10 at the Y. Uh, not a bad area to drive through, at least this early in the morning, but be on the lookout because the big trending issue, at least at this point, are going to be stall vehicles. We talked about this one, 35 
25 South and McCullough Avenue, and you notice it's not really causing a slowdown in the southbound lanes, but watch out because not the only stall that we're tracking. Let's take a jump up over here. I-10 westbound at Crossroads Boulevard. Forgot to add the S to Crossroads again, uh, but just watch out that you, as you travel through that area because, again, stalls have been the big problem this morning, but that's not a big issue for anyone that has to head out in the next few minutes, but you always have to drive safe. Move over, slow down, check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway, and watch out for some concrete work that will actually take us all the way up into April 3rd. Actually, this may be an old graphic because today is April 3rd, but we are going to see some work take place out there uh, right now. What it, that is is actually overnight, so we actually have one more night of that, pardon me, and that should take us all the way up until 5 in the morning. We'll see a single lane closure on the eastbound lanes of Valley High Road, but what you can do now is scan the QR code, so if the work is taking place during the day or overnight, as you just saw, that QR code will let you know what is, is expected before you have to hit the roads. We have a full list of all the current closures in our area, so plan your commute ahead of time. But guys, it looks like slowdowns may start to be more of the issue right now as I'm checking some of these trans guide cameras. Remember to drive safe. Pack some patience when you see those slowdowns as well. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's a little foggish. It's a little foggish. <laughs> We're going to add that to the bit. weather word dictionary. People Oof. have been doing that more. Mark Austin combined mist and drizzle last week, yeah. and now we have foggish. Foggish. Yeah. See? Just I like that. Adding words left and right. We'll we'll see if we can use it, Dave. We'll see. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys, ever did Where's Waldo? Remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's play that this morning. Where's the hummingbird? Oh, what? Can you see it? Can you it's see there. It? Can, uh, Wait, give it oh. Oh. Okay, I, I found it, but I'm not going to give it away. You found it already? I found mm -hmm. it, but I have my eyes. Give right. us a clue. Is it in the middle, the top, the it's bottom of the photo? Indian paintbrush. Yeah. Just so the, the little red, it's, one of the red flowers. It's, it's, yeah, it's smack down in the middle. There you go. Right there? Yeah. So, so you know, <laughs> with devices, I want to, like, zoom yeah. in, right? You I guys, I still it. don't see it. I can do it. It's right <laughs> there. Right there. <laughs> Uh, great picture. Uh, it's it's hard to catch those things, but that is a beautiful, beautiful shot. Photog Holly out of Boulevardy. We appreciate yeah. it. Great stuff. Let's go outside for you. 71 and cloudy. We've got a dew point of 68. Humidity is all the way up at 90%. The air is thick. We do have some fog, although it's not uh, not been too much this morning. By noontime, we're at 83. Clouds begin to break up. And by this afternoon, we're in the mid-90s. 94 today. Some places could be up around 100 Carrizo Springs. It's going to be a hot afternoon. Not only that, it's going to be humid too. So prepare for the heat and humidity next couple days. Dew points stay rather high today and tomorrow. Wednesday, they drop off. We get a frontal battery that cools us down, dries us out, and then we get some more humidity by Thursday and Friday. But it's a good thing because it leads to some rain chances. Let me show you what's going on right now across the country. We do have some severe weather ongoing across parts of Alabama, that's working its way towards Georgia and Florida. Tornado watch box out this morning. That's the same storm system that brought hail to Dallas yesterday. And as we look locally at the setup, we do have a dry line out to the west. That separates humid air from dry air. And as we fast forward to the afternoon and evening hours, this is 7 p.m., sometimes we can get a storm to develop right along the front. It's our dry line, I should say. It's rare, but it can happen. So we'll watch for that this afternoon. I'm really not convinced we're going to see anything at all, but the Storm Prediction Center did put us in a risk for severe weather on a scale of 1 to 5 and 1, uh, because chances are it's not going to happen. But if it does, if a storm does develop, it could be strong to severe. And yes, San Antonio is included in that. We'll certainly watch it. I think uh, we're probably dry today and tomorrow. But as our front comes in, and that's scheduled to arrive Wednesday morning, this is 6 a.m., we do have a 20% chance of rain showers and storms along the front. And then it turns windy and cooler on Wednesday. The front pulls up stationary, and as we get some energy working up over top of it, then we start to see storms, showers and storms develop along the coast Thursday morning. Those spread inland towards San Antonio by Thursday afternoon. And we get a good chance of rain, 60%. On Friday, same story. It's widespread showers and storms. A good bet. 70% all day Friday. This could be some good soaking rain too, which would be fantastic for our drought situation that we have going on. So let me lay it all out for you in the seven day forecast. 94 today, 92 tomorrow. That's near record heat. 20% chance of storms as we get into Wednesday morning with the front. Then turning windy and cooler, 79, 61 on Thursday. That's it. Cloudy, cool, rainy. That's the theme on Friday too. 67 Saturday, 40% chance of showers. They'll start to exit the area. And right now it looks like Easter Sunday won't be too bad. 79 and partly cloudy.
Well, Justin, that sounds great. It sounds like springtime is just really on the roll here. You know, we it got is. a couple showers throughout the week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of ups and downs in that forecast. But the, uh, the main takeaway there is the rain, which we, we desperately need. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. 621, 71 degrees. Just ahead, Tesla is setting records to start the year. We'll explain next in your consumer headlines. I have moderate to severe Crohn's disease. Now they're sky rising. Things are looking up. I've got some to relieve. Control of my Crohn's means everything to me. Oh, oh. significant symptom relief with SkyRizzy, including less abdominal pain and fewer bowel movements at four weeks. SkyRizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor for Crohn's that can deliver both clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. The majority of people on SkyRizzy achieve long-lasting remission at one year. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Ask your gastroenterologist how you can take control of your Crohn's with SkyRizzy. Control is everything to me. Oh, Learn how AbbVie can help you save. In this morning's GMA First Look, breaking their silence. Tough not have here. Stay just night, get up and watch the sunrise and drink our coffee and cry in your coffee. The yellow and white tulips bearing the name Ethan Smile meeting the sun for the first time. It's just turned into something so special, something tangible that represents him now. Nearly five months ago, the 20 year old was murdered along with his girlfriend, Zana Kernodal, and her roommates, Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan, in that off campus home at the University of Idaho. Here at Tulip Valley Farms, Ethan worked in the fields planting bulbs, and now he's being remembered with his own. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this powerful interview with the parents of University of Idaho victim Ethan Chapin. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. In your consumer headlines, Tesla setting some records. Elon Musk's car company says it delivered more than 422,000 electric vehicles in the first three months of the year, and it created nearly 441,000. Both those figures are new company records. Plus, you can expect fewer movies from Netflix in the future. According to Bloomberg, the streaming service is cutting back production and laying off some workers, they say, in hopes of creating better quality projects. Over the past two years, Netflix has released at least one movie per week. And today is the 50th anniversary of the first cell phone call. Happened on April 3rd, 1973, Motorola. <laughs> Engineer Marty Cooper dialed his rival from a Manhattan street corner to announce he was calling from a portable phone, which looked like a brick. <laughs> Cooper is now 94, and he's set to reenact that call at some point today. David, how heavy do you think that phone It was, was heavy. Had one. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Well, that's... <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll just go past that part, I see. 626, 71 degrees. <laughs> Still ahead at 630. It's almost time for Fiesta. How you can score some tickets to the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Parade as a KSAT insider. Plus. We call it a resurrection. Uh, a resurrection of something new, new life. A local organization is turning what was an eyesore into a place to benefit the unsheltered. With some next level care, how a generous donation made the difference. This morning on GMSA, an El Paso woman who disappeared after attending a UFC event here in San Antonio last month found safe and alive. We'll take a look at where. Plus, local teachers are making their voices heard on what it would take to keep them in our schools. Why one teacher union says the solutions are simple if the state would work with them. And outside with live cam, if you are just waking up and looking at your TV, there's some clouds out there, a lot of humidity, and get ready for some changes this week. Good morning. It is 6.30 on your Monday. It is April 3rd. Yes, thank you so much for starting your week with us. We are looking forward to some weather very soon here. Foggish weather with two Gs. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we got the foggy <laughs> conditions this morning. That's a new term David made up, by the <laughs> thank way. Thank you. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, and then we've got some rain chances, which is fantastic. Uh, that's going to be as we get into late in the week. So a lot to look at here. Right now, we've got the uh, the 
Thick humidity, 71 degrees and cloudy skies, dew point is at 68. So if you walk outside, it's the air is just super thick. Uh, that's not going to really change much. I do want to let you know pollen count's not in yet, but this is yesterday's oak was very high, 16,440. I don't anticipate much change there. So just know that we are very much in the thick of oak season. Uh, probably comes in high again today. Case that 12 hour forecast. 68 degrees at 8 o'clock, 79 a.m. By noontime, we're at 83. Clouds will begin to clear out, and we'll get partly cloudy conditions this afternoon. We're up around 94. Really hot day. Not quite a record, but above average. And there is a very, very small outside chance of a pop-up storm later today. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the extended forecast. But uh, the bigger story is going to be our better rain chances that show up later this week. And we'll have more on that in just a little bit, too. For now, we'll go over to Stephen and look at the morning commute gets you ready head out the door Stephen. well it's that busy time justin we are now a little bit after 6 30 and so we're going to start to see a lot more folks out there check out 90 at 1604 and this is actually really what we start to see a lot more folks getting the commute started with us waking up and uh, taking a look around town though we're going to start to see again more activity out there 35 at no galitos and with that activity of course uh, comes some problems and the trending issue right now have been stall vehicles. All right, so we told you about this one here at 35 South and at McCullough, and you can see that there's now a little bit of a buildup, but that's actually taking place in the northbound lanes. Uh, just watch out there if the commute takes you through the area, but not the only stall that we are tracking. Let's take a now a drive over here to the southeast side of town, Loop 410 eastbound at Southton Road, another stall being reported. So as I always like to say, I know it kind of gets tiresome, but check those vehicles because we want to make sure you get to where you need to be on time and safely. We well, notice that slowdowns are always starting to, to pop up in the usual spots. US 90 as you approach 1604 on the far west side and of course as well as 35 where we'll see a little bit more activity on the northeast side if you're traveling in from Live Oak perhaps. But other than that, stalls and slowdowns seem to be the big problem right now. Check out 10 at West Avenue. Starting to see a lot more folks out there even on those upper and lower levels there at 35 at Flores. We'll continue to track the roads closely and as always, make sure you do the same. David Alyssa. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters tackled a blaze at a business on the city's northwest side. It happened overnight around 11 p.m. in the 100 block of Babcock near Fredericksburg Road. Firefighters on the scene found flames in the building's attic and put it out quickly. Right now, investigators are working to find a cause of the fire. No injuries were reported. A San Antonio mother says she's overwhelmed with gratitude after her daughter was found safe. Lynette Martinez from El Paso disappeared after attending a UFC event here in San Antonio last month. She was found in Austin yesterday. Her discovery was confirmed by the University of Texas Police Department, along with her mother, Rosie Galvan, who we spoke to on Friday. Galvan has since posted on social media about the situation, saying she is grateful for all the supporters. Happening now, the Teacher Vacancy Task Force in Texas has released a report recommending lawmakers raise teacher pay, increase training, and improve working conditions. In a task force survey, teachers say an uns unsustainable workload is the number one reason they leave the job. The report recommended lawmakers fund a study on how teachers use their time in and out of the classroom. The task force also recommends raising the amount of state funding per student. Ali Andre Lopez with San Antonio Alliance, the union for San Antonio ISD says teachers have called for pay raises for years. So what makes this year different than other years is that the money is there and we need our elected officials to step up and make a choice to invest in our public schools. Now, right now, there are several bills filed in Austin to address teacher shortages, such as House Bill 1548, which would give all Texas teacher a $15,000 raise. Meanwhile, Communities Under the Bridge has been helping the city of San Antonio's unsheltered population since 1996, and now they're adding new resources. Two old condemned buildings were just knocked down to build two new buildings. And it'll have showers, barbershop, and a laundromat. Some organizations across the city that help the unsheltered population offer showers, but this barbershop and laundromat will be the first of their kind. All the permits have been filed, but the design process is still underway. However, Diane Talbert with Communities Under the Bridge says the greatest need is financial help from the community. We're going to depend on that same generosity to help us raise the between four and five hundred thousand dollars it's going to take to clear this property totally and raise up two brand new resurrected buildings. Now the hope is to have eight showers, ten washer and dryers, 
By the end of the year, they hope to have progress on the construction. If you'd like to help, click on this story on KSAT.com for all the details on how to donate and or volunteer. The San Antonio Book Festival is now less than two weeks away. And the United Way essay will be accepting book donations from now until April 20th. San Antonio personalities, athletes, and community leaders are teaming up with the United Way of San Antonio and Bear County for this year's Read United. There will be a book drive to help share the importance of literacy with other children in our community. Books can be purchased through the United Way's Amazon gift list, and you can find that by by scanning the QR code right here on your screen right now. That is a great event for the entire family. Hope you'll be able to be there with absolutely, us. Absolutely, absolutely. Right now your time is 637 and it's 71 degrees outside. Coming up next, it's almost time for your Fiesta. How you can score some tickets to the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau parades as a KSAT insider. Got the details on the way. Welcome back. Fiesta Center Tenor doesn't start until the end of this month this year, but here at KSET, we can already hear and see signs of the citywide celebration. Yes, and we are so excited about this and looking forward to it. About the possibility of having you join us for the KSAT Fiesta parties at the Battle of Flowers in Fiesta Flambeau parades. Tickets for both events are on sale right now at KSAT.com. Just scan this QR code right here on your screen. Take a look and it'll take you where you need to go for the battle of flowers and purchases and everything you need to know. KSAT insiders who buy tickets with us get admission to the exclusive KSAT party, seats to see the parade, two Las Palapas tacos, a drink, plus mm. a chance to mingle with your neighbors and your favorite KSAT weather and news personalities. Wow, David, that sounds really, really good. Also on KSAT.com, if you're looking to snag a 2023 KSAT Fiesta Medal, our giveaways start this Thursday, April 6th, and runs through until April 27th. All right, so we got a list of dates for the medal giveaways, but you'll need to tune in to KSAT to find out where the medal giveaway is each day on that list, and you can find the full list right now on KSET.com. And we know people are already excited. They're all ready to oh, yeah. get those medals and they're already ready to meet Stephen Cavazos and Justin Horn. <laughs> like, oh, I gotta meet those hey, guys. Hey, Viva, right? You yeah. know, we're all excited about it. And you. Alyssa, this is your first one. Yes. So yeah, yeah, can't wait to uh, introduce you to a lot of our viewers out there. So again, more on KSAT.com. But let's get a look here. Things aren't looking too much, uh, uh, like too much fun over here. US 90 at loop 1604, a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, our friends at Trans Guide were kind enough to get us this shot there. At this point, Texas has not reported any major issue. This could just be typical uh, congestion that we see out there and we always see it right there along US 90 eastbound as people are heading in from Castroville. So expect that loop 410 eastbound at Southton Road still a stall reported out there. But other than that, that has been the main headline of the morning stalls, slowdowns and plenty of construction as you can see it right there on our map. Let's talk about what will happen here in Kendall County a little bit later this morning. We will see some pavement work. Now remember this work actually begins today around nine in the morning, but crews tend to get out there a little bit earlier. So just watch out. This will take us all the way to to three in the afternoon and we're going to see some slowdowns. I can guarantee you that rolling lane closures in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. So again, if you're traveling through I-10 in Kendall County, watch out for those text dot crews and yeah, maybe pack some patience with a cup of coffee if you have to travel along US 90 Loop 1604. I don't like seeing that, but um, this mm. is always expected at this time. Yeah, not fun. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, we were talking about Alyssa's first fiesta mm -hmm. and the fact that it starts with fiesta, fiesta, then there's oyster bake mm -hmm. and taste in New Orleans. Exactly. And I was telling them I heard about oyster, oyster bake before I moved to San Antonio. That's just, you know, how big it is. There you yeah. go. Yeah. It is a big deal. And the weather, you never know for fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you get into April, it's uh, you just Take what we got. We get. You never know. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully, hopefully this year it works out well. We know that the last several days has been pretty wild weather-wise across the country. You want to talk about severe weather reports? There have been so so many stretching from Texas up to the Midwest and even the East Coast. Yesterday, Dallas got walloped with hail and some big-time storms. We know about the tornadoes we've seen over the last couple days, and there's going to be more. Tuesday is going to be another big severe weather day. Not necessarily here but across the Midwest once again, unfortunately. Uh, so we're just kind of in the thick of it right now when we're talking about severe weather season. One thing I can tell you is that it is going to be hot the next couple of days, and then we get some well below average temperatures by Thursday and Friday. 
We'll look at the drop off. We go from 92 down to 61 Thursday, 60 on Friday. Here's why. We get a front through on Wednesday, and then behind that, we get some good rainfall, and I think that will really keep temperatures down by the end of the week. So if you're not a fan of the hot weather, just wait a few days. It will change. 72 stints and 71 Kelly, 70 of Randolph. We've got a southeast Julie wind right now, and as you plan out your day, you know it'll be cloudy this morning. Then we'll break out into some sun this afternoon. Again, hot temperatures up around 94 for a high, and we'll have a pretty stout southerly wind too, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, temperatures around the area in the mid 90s for the most part, a little cooler in the hill country. There could even be some triple digits on the map, places like Carrizo Springs and Eagle Pass, where we're forecasting 100 to 101. So yes, very hot. That'll be the case again uh, tomorrow too. Severe weather ongoing this morning across parts of Mississippi and Alabama. This is the same storm system that brought severe weather yesterday to Dallas, but most of Texas, at least at this hour, is quiet. There is a dry line that's going to set up just to our west. What does that mean? Well, it separates the humid air from the dry air. Sometimes, very rarely, you can get some storms that develop along the dry line during the afternoon hours. This is around 7 o'clock today. This computer model does show one lone storm developing along that boundary. Could it happen? Yes. Is it likely? No. But the problem with that is if we do see a storm develop on the long, along the dry line, it likely becomes severe. So we'll keep an eye on it. The Storm Prediction Center does put us in a low end risk today. And that again is if, if a storm can get going along the dry line, uh, rain chances are 10% or less. As we look down the line, here comes our front. This is scheduled to arrive on Wednesday. It's out ahead of this front where they're going to see again a ton of severe weather up across the Midwest tomorrow. But it arrives to us Wednesday morning, I'd say right before sunrise. As it comes through, there'll be a thin line of showers and storms, so about a 20% chance. I'm not expecting much rain out of this, but it's possible that the commute could be a little bit wet on Wednesday morning. That front moves towards the coast. We clear out a little bit. Wednesday will be a cooler and windy day. But then the front pulls up stationary. We get some disturbances rolling in over top of that, and we bring back in the rain. This time, these are healthy rain chances. I think we're going to get some good soaking rain out of this, and that is fantastic news. As of right now, we've got a 60% chance of rain on Thursday, and that's mainly afternoon hours, and then all day on Friday. Showers and storms, widespread activity, 70%. And then as we get into even Friday night, there's still some chances. Now, uh, as far as Saturday and Easter Sunday are concerned, I think we still could see a few scattered showers on Saturday. It does appear that we'll clear out some for Easter Sunday, 79. So there it is all laid out in the seven day forecast. Uh, you see the cool down there Wednesday. Be prepared for some gusty winds Wednesday morning too. Uh, and then the cool temperatures, the good rain chances Thursday and Friday. That is a sight for sore eyes. So we've got to get through the next couple days. And by the way, tomorrow we can also see near record heat. So the color on your drought monitor may not change a lot, but there's we could like at least get a little lighter shade. We've maybe. got to start chipping into that uh, that, that rainfall yeah. deficit. And I think if we can get the three or four more events like this, then you may start to see the, those Ooh. colors change. Ooh, good. Yeah. Yes. Right now your time is 647 and 71 degrees. Coming up, money can't buy love, but it can tell you a lot about the person you're with. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to spot any red flags on your partner's spending habits. Wow, and taking a live look across the city, that morning commute is underway. A lot of traffic more on the roads. Be safe while commuting to work. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest as former President Trump gets set to travel to New York City to surrender to authorities. We'll tell you what you can expect. And more severe storms. The same area that was hit so hard on Friday going to add to the violent storms. In the last 10 days, we've seen more than 50 people die. We're going to have that potential again through tomorrow. I'll have the track of the latest storms and the timing right here on GMA. The latest round of severe weather dropped hail the size of golf balls in North Texas, where tornado warnings were issued in the Dallas area. 
parts of the south have little time to prepare for the next round of storms, with more tornadoes possible tomorrow from Dallas to Chicago, including Little Rock, Arkansas, in the bullseye once again. And when you see that threat ma map, it is startling just where it's going to happen again. And the threat area includes Chicago, much of northern Illinois, back through Kansas City, St. Louis, you're in there too. Memphis, back through Little Hard Hit, Little Rock, and these will come at night, making them even more dangerous. This video shows a powerful tornado tearing through Little Rock over the weekend. Before and after satellite images show where the twister carved its path of destruction. At least 59 tornadoes tore across 11 states on Friday and Saturday, killing at least 32 people. In Illinois, friends and family gathered to honor Frederick Livingston Jr. He died after the roof of this theater collapsed during a concert. <laughs> Yeah, it happened so fast, man. <laughs> they took raised me since I was two years old. Five people remain in critical condition. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, one person was killed in Delaware after a tornado destroyed this home. In New Jersey, this doorbell camera captured one of four twisters to hit the state. I was traumatized. I was petrified. I don't know what to expect. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Take a look ahead. Fiesta is right around the corner and KSAT insiders can win a chance to be royalty riding on the Battle of Flowers Parade. Right now you can sign up to be an insider and enter the Be a Royal for the day sweepstakes. On top of receiving royal treatment at the Battle of the Flowers Parade, you can win a $1,000 credit to Amol's Fiesta and Party Store. You can get all dressed up then, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> to enter, head to KSAT.com slash insider, register for the free program, then fit out the entry form. It's right there on our website, KSAT.com. You can also enter by stopping at one of the next four events. Those are running through April 11th. The contest ends April 20th. A winner will be picked at random and announced during Fiesta. Meanwhile, the United Way of San Antonio and Bear County are finding ways to support parents who are looking for higher education and job training by providing scholarships. Coming up today on GMSAs at 9, Tiffany Huerta speaks with a local mom who says their scholarship has not only helped her, but her family as well. All right, let's get over to Stephen. We were so close. You, we were so close, guys. Um, unfortunately, it's busier out there, and when it gets busy, we start to see a lot more issues pop up, and that's really what's expected. Let's first start with a look around town. 35 at San Marcos. Expect to start to expect to see some slowdowns as the commute really does get rolling there. Even 35 north at Loop 410. Now, while these trans guide cameras are showing a pretty busy commute, unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to get on the phone with them and find out if we can get a view of the conditions out here. Loop 4. 10 southbound at East Houston Street. We have our first crash reported in the morning, and unfortunately, the situation is not looking good for drivers out there. You can see that there was a big red uh, detected right there along our map, which obviously means congestion. So watch out. Let's hope everyone's doing okay out there, but let's make sure first responders have plenty of room. We also have a stall reported along 281 northbound at Hildebrand Avenue. That's not causing any issues, but check it out now. A lot more stalls. Uh, I'm sorry, pardon me. A lot more slowdowns expected along US 90. Uh, on the far west side of San Antonio. You could even see it as you approach Loop 1604-35 there just above uh, Live Oak. Again, uh, we're going to have to get back on our friends with, uh, on the phone with our friends at TransGuide. Lots of issues are being reported right now, so let's go ahead and toss it over to Justin. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I know it's busy out there. We don't have any drizzle or anything like that, though, this morning. The fog really has behaved itself, too. We haven't had much of that. So mostly cloudy skies. Through about lunchtime, and then the sun will break out and we'll get some very warm temperatures. 94 this afternoon. Again, there is a small, small outside chance of a storm popping up on the dry line, but I'd say most of us, if not all of us, will be dry later today. 92 tomorrow, there comes the front, and then the cooler, wet weather shows up by the end of the week. 60% chance of rain Thursday, 70% chance on Friday. Yes, thank you so much. We will see you back here for GMSA at 9. GMA is next. Have a great Monday. Thank you.